Hello everyone. Welcome to GTech Techno Solution Private Limited. Today we are going to discuss about the digestive system and how a mouth helps in the process. So these are the topics that we are going to cover in this session. We will be studying about the parts of the mouth such as cheeks, lips, saliva, palate and lymph tissue. We will also study about the salivary glands, salivary secretions, tongue and pharynx. Let us see how the digestions are classified into mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. If a person takes in the food and reduces the size of the food by chewing, then it is known as mechanical digestion. If the digestion is done by the enzyme such as saliva which contains the enzyme amylase, it breaks down the carbohydrates. Then the digestion is known as chemical digestion. So let us see what happens in the mouth in case of the mechanical and chemical digestion. In mechanical digestion if you see, your teeth will be grinding the food into smaller particles which is further digested. Whereas in enzymatic digestion, the salivary glands will produce the saliva and the saliva contains the enzyme salivary amylase. This salivary amylase will break down the starch in your food into maltose. So thus, this is your chemical digestion or enzymatic digestion done by the enzyme. Next we are going to see the various parts of your mouth such as your cheek. Your cheeks are meant for holding your food in the mouth. Your lips has the sensory nerve fibers which judge the temperature of the food. Your saliva secreted by the salivary glands will moisten the mouth and they will also begin starch and fat digestion. They will be cleansing your teeth and they will prevent bacterial growth. Your saliva helps in dissolving the molecules so that they can stimulate the taste buds. Your saliva will moisten the food and it binds it together into bolus. So these are some of the major portions or the parts that helps in digestion in your mouth. Next we have the part known as palate. Palate is nothing but the roof of your mouth. It separates the oral cavity from the nasal cavity. Your ulva is the portion of soft palate that hangs onto your throat. So this is your ulva. So your uvula is pointed out over here. Your lymph tissue is the next portion which has palatine tonsils which is also known as oropharynx. Your pharyngeal tonsils 
as the adenoids which is the nasopharynx Next we are going to see about the salivary glands. The salivary glands has the following parts. The parotid duct, the parotid gland, the masseter muscle, your submandibular gland, the sublingual gland, the submandibular duct your mandible and the tongue so these are the parts which helps in the secretion of saliva which helps in the digestion process your salivary glands will secrete the enzyme saliva as we know and this is the part that initiates the digestion of your carbohydrates there are three major portions of your salivary glands which includes the parotid gland the submandibular gland the sublingual gland as the three major portions of your salivary glands and the minor portions are scattered throughout the mucosa of the tongue palate and cheeks so these help in secretion of saliva initiating the digestion process which is further carried down as the food moves down Your salivary secretions is what we are going to discuss about. The different salivary glands have varying proportions of two types of the secretory cells. They are sera cell and mucous cells. Your sera cell will produce a watery fluid with a digestive enzyme known as salivary amylase and a mucus cell will secrete the mucus your parotid glands will secrete clear watery and serous fluids and they are rich in the enzyme salivary amylase your submandibular glands will primarily secrete serous fluids and some mucus so these are the salivary secretions of the glands which helps in digestion masticate the food into smaller pieces we have teeth so by cutting down the food into smaller pieces it makes the food to be easier to swallow and it exposes more surface area there are 32 teeth for an adult and 20 of them for baby which is known as deciduous teeth and they are arranged from the midline to the rear of each jaw everyone has two incisors which is chisel like cutting teeth and it's used to bite a piece of the food and they are very sharp as they are cutting teeth So here what you're viewing is the teeth 
and the structure of how the teeth is being placed in a person's mouth. So here you can see the two incisors which are present for a human in the front and the canine teeth that is the pointed one which is sharp and it acts to puncture and the shred the food. Your premolars are located over here next to your canine teeth and they are broad if you see and they are used for crushing and grinding your food. Your molars, there are three of them and they are even broader and they are used for crushing and grinding. So, this is how the canine molars and premolars including your incisors are lined up in your mouth. And these form the first portion of your mechanical digestion, chewing of the food. Next we are going to see about the tongue. A tongue is nothing but a thick muscular organ which occupies the floor of the mouth and it nearly fills the oral cavity when the mouth is closed. So here you can see that the root portion of the tongue and this forms the body of the tongue. Your taste buds are located on the papillae of the tongue and your palestine tonsils is located on either side of the tongue. Your lingual tonsils is located over here. The hollow cavity which leads into your pharynx is the epiglottis. Next we are going to study in detail about the pharynx. Pharynx is a passage which connects the nasal cavity with the oral cavity for breathing. It pushes the food into your esophagus. Your pharynx can be subdivided into nasopharynx and it is behind your nasal cavity. So your epiglottis is over here behind which is your larynx and your larynx is separated from the nasal cavity by the pharynx. Let us see how the swallowing process takes place. The soft palate, that is your roof of the mouth will rise and the uvula covers the opening between the nasal and the oral cavity. Your epiglottis will be covering the larynx. So in this process, your epiglottis will prevent the entry of the food into the larynx that is your windpipe and your pharynx has the nasopharynx, the oropharynx and the laryngopharynx. So as you can see 
your pharynx connects between the nasal cavity and the oral cavity so your epiglottis will be covering the larynx meantime your tongue will press the food against the roof of the mouth forcing the food into the oropharynx which leads it gradually into your laryngopharynx and finally the food enters your esophagus by the peristalsis the food reaches the stomach so this is how the swallowing process is done in a human mouth the muscles that are located in the pharynx will contract in order to move the food into the esophagus opening so the food is pushed into the esophagus which opens and the food will enter the esophagus using the muscles of the pharynx the pharyngeal constrictor muscles include the superior the middle and the inferior muscles so your epiglottis on closing your trachea that is your windpipe will push the food into the esophagus So this is how your pharynx pushes the food into the esophagus. Here you can clearly see the lateral sectional view of the pharynx. The food enters the mouth, your tongue pushes it using the palate into the pharynx region your epiglottis in the meantime will block the trachea that is your windpipe and the food enters into the esophagus using the muscles superior middle and inferior so this is the process of swallowing with the help of pharynx So here in this picture you can clearly see how the larynx and the pharynx are separated by the epiglottis and the soft palate In this process your constrictor muscles will relax in order to open the esophagus to allow the food inside your esophagus so this is the moment that occurs in your esophagus the peristaltic wave will move the food mass by alternate contraction and expansion allowing it to enter into the stomach by peristaltic waves so this is what is meant by peristalsis the alternate contraction and expansion of the esophagus thank you so much for joining gtech hope you would have got a very good idea about how the mouth helps in the process of digestion thank you